Hi, I'm John from Offroad CC, and today I'm extremely forking excited. That's because I've got my grubby mitts on the all new 2021 Fox 36. Now, I know a lot of the big chat on the internet has been about the absolutely brand spanking and all new chassis, the Fox 38, which again, guess what? It's two millimeters fatter than this one. I'm actually more excited about this because Previously, this fork had been pushed into all sorts of duties. It was, you know, kind of long travel enduro up to 180 mil, sort of like, you know, kind of like heavy duty trail or mountain. But now, now that 38 is here, that basically this can be refocused in as a trail fork. So now there's none of the long travel options anymore. It's just 150 mil and 160 mil, and it actually shares most of the exciting new features that you get on the Fox 38. So, what are those features? Well. Taking a first look at it, the most obvious one is these new air channels from the lowers. Now, these take a little bit of explaining as to what they do, but the basic idea is that as your fork compresses down, there is a volume of air in here, and that's not the negative air chamber of the spring, that's a different thing. There's a chamber or volume of air in here that as it's trapped, it compresses and acts like a secondary spring. The problem with that is that it makes it very hard to get full travel because you're compressing quite a bit of air into quite a small space. And that was the case with the old 36. Basically, it was nigh on impossible to get it to bottom out. And Lord knows I tried. Um, this apparently should be much easier. And the way it achieves that is that in here, there are two bushings that hold these upper legs and they slide on that and they smoothly go up and down in there. The problem was that the bushings also cut off any airflow. So although there is a big volume of air in here, it's basically cut off from here. These channels now allow some of the air that would otherwise be trapped in here to travel up and sit in between here. It means that it's a much bigger volume. It means this kind of auxiliary spring, which is kind of really unwanted, no longer has such a great effect. And it means that the main spring, which lives in here, can get on with doing what it's supposed to do. The other side benefit is that the negative chamber in this fork has been made just a little bit larger. I'm going to take it apart in a little bit and compare it to the old fork, so hopefully we'll see exactly how those differences have been made, That's quite interesting. But that should mean that the fork is a little bit smoother and a little bit plusher off the top, which is a good thing because, in all honesty, the RockShox Lyrics Debonair Spring kind of had the old 36 on the ropes when it came to just that initial plushness and that, that air spring movement. The Lyric is a superb, superb fork. Hopefully this should mean that the 36 can compete and even surpass that. It'd be very interesting to see. Uh, the other rather cool thing is that in the bottom of the legs here, that is where your lubricating oil lives. And these new channels, not only do they allow air through, they also allow a lubricating oil, which means that as instead of it just sloshing around here and hopefully some making its way onto the bushings and getting stuck in and kind of like helping lubricate your fork, it's now got a much easier path to get squirted into here, lubricate that lower bushing, the upper bushing, um, the foam ring in here, basically get all that oily goodness everywhere. And with any telescopic fork, friction is the enemy of performance. So the less friction it's got, the better. That also brings us on to these little fellas here. These are new air bleeders. If you were familiar with the old 40 series of downhill forks, um, you might recognize them, but basically it's to do with this lower air volume again. But as your fork is cycling up and down, these lip seals here, they can like gulp in a little bit of air. And what happens if you've done like a really long big descent is that the bottom of here, or the bottom chamber in here, not negative air spring again, this starts to become like overpressurized. And again, that means that your fork is going to become less sensitive because you've basically got another unwanted spring that's getting harder and harder here. In the past, you see a lot of pro Enduro World Series mechanics. They get like a zip tie and poke it down there to try and like burp out some air. Obviously, that's like not a brilliant idea because you can get like dirt and filth in there. It's basically bypassing the seal, which is never a good thing. So now all you need to do to get that exact same thing and basically bleed this back to atmospheric pressure is you press one of these little fellas on either side of the leg, and lo and behold, your fork should be working exactly as it was before you started rattling it down rocks. Um, other kind of groovy things going on with the chassis is that it now has a floating axle. The old axle 
didn't have this pinch bubble here. And what that meant was that as you screwed in the axle and then tightened it up, it would try and squeeze the fork legs together. And what happens there is as soon as these fork legs are out of parallel, that's introducing more friction. Like I said before, friction, the enemy of fork performance. Now what happens is that you can use this, either this straight up 15 Q act or this 15 mil just straight up bolt in axle, or you can have a quick release one, that's an important difference. But what you do with this one, the screwing one, is that you screw it in, pump the forks once or twice, and then you nip down this bolt, and that holds it all securely in place, but with these fork legs totally parallel. The quick release axle works in pretty much the same way, except you don't touch this bolt, it's just got this little sleeve here that you put your quick release into, tighten it up. It's not quite as stiff as when you're using this, because obviously it doesn't have that extra pinch bolt to secure it there, but it is an awful lot quicker to get your wheel in and out. I guess for most people, if you don't take your wheel out an awful lot, this is probably the better thing to go for, but if you're constantly taking it in and out of a car or to get in your house or anything like that, then obviously quick release is there. The chassis is the same between the both, so it's just a case of picking which axle you want uh, when you buy the fork. Other groovy things, you'll notice that this crown has changed shape quite a bit. It's now canted much further forwards, and that's to give better clearance with the latest generation of bikes, which tend to have like much fatter head tubes. And again, with forks having shorter offsets, so basically like this much from here to here being done or pulled back on the crown, uh, you will, if you had a really fat, you'd be running the danger of that hitting your head tube, which would be a very bad scene indeed. So now this is now canted forwards. Um, I've not seen claims that Fox has made for stiffness, but I think they have said that this is now stiffer. I don't know by how much, but yeah, it should be rather cool. They've also beefed up the crown, uh, which is said to just make it like look better with these big fat head tubes on bikes. Because the old forks look a little bit anemic if you had some sort of super burly bike and then a little spindly 36. It's mad to think of 36 is spindly nowadays, isn't it? But compared to the 38, it does kind of look a bit skinny nowadays. But it is a trail fork after all now. So, other groovy stuff that's gone on is that the new Fit Grip 2 damper has had some tweaks. So the Fit Grip 2 damper is basically a four-way adjustable damper, which means that you get both high and low speed rebound adjustment and high and low speed compression adjustment. However, with the older damper, there was a technology job or a techno. However, with the older damper, there was a technology called variable valve control, but it was only on the rebound circuit. What variable valve control allowed you to do is basically, in a gross simplification here, is to change the preload on the rebound or the high speed rebound shim stack. So adjusting it like that is essentially like how you'd revalve it, but obviously revalving the shock involves taking it apart taking out bits of shim stack and then changing the pressure on it doing like that. However, but tweaking the high speed adjuster on that, essentially it was like allowing you to do that. So that's that's a good thing. It means that you get much more consistent damping, you get finer control over the damping. It's all a good thing. However, they've now added it onto the compression circuit as well. So it'll be really interesting to see how this new damper rides like that. So that is about it. What I'm going to do is probably whiz this little thing apart and we'll just have a look at some of the differences between the air spring. We can see where they've got some negative air or negative air spring volume increases from. And yeah, I think it should be very interesting. Right, so I'm back after having taken the fork apart. And uh, what have I found? What are the differences between the, let's just stop the all fork now, between the old air spring and the new air spring? Well, first things first, uh, these are both the same travel fork, but if you look, this one, the new one, is quite a lot longer. Um, see that extra volume there? 
In fact, uh, this, I've measured it up, and it's come in as uh, being 60 mil tall, roughly. Uh, whereas this old one is 51 mil. A bit of fun maths vibing later. Uh, and it turns out that the new negative air volume of the spring, uh, given that the, the positive air chamber is the same, is actually 17.6% larger, which is a good old chunk. But that is, it took me a while to get my head around how they've done this, because it's actually pretty cunning. It's kind of simple when you know how, but it took me a while to figure it out. It's really groovy. So first things first, you'll notice that if I get the fork here, um, this leg, the air spring leg, is longer than this leg. On the old fork, they were the same length. Um, that then corresponds to exactly the same thing here. So you see this leg, which is the damper leg, um, finishes roughly about here, you know, the bolt cap is about there. On this one, it's all the way down here. That means that they've basically lowered this bit of the fork, they've got more negative volume out of it. Um, which I think is a really cunning way to have done it. And when you get that in conjunction with what they've done, um, basically allowing the trapped air volume that we spoke about before to now use further up here, it means that you get a fork that is not only more supple in the start of the stroke, it's also less progressive right at the end. So it means that you should get a blusher start of the stroke and also an easy to access end of the travel or an easily more easily tunable end of the travel. If you compare that to something like RockShox's Debonair Air Spring, that does give amazing like supple performance um, because basically they, they do some clever little machining here. They drill a little hole into their tooth, the volume of this air shaft to act as extra negative share volume. But because there's still the air trapped in the lower, that fork is like really, really hard to bottom out. It's super, super plush and fluttery and beautiful at the start of the travel. But it is, as anyone who's ridden one, it is very hard to bottom out. Even with no volume spaces in, it's like getting to that last bit of the travel is hard. So Fox has been very, very cunning and they've managed to do uh, both things with this fork. So flusher at the start and you can still use all the travel. Very clever indeed. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this tech deep dive on the new Fox 36. Um, next thing is obviously to get out and ride it and see how it compares on the trail, not only to the old fork, but also to all its rivals. Uh, hopefully that'll be coming fairly soon. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give it a like and for more stuff like this, please subscribe to our channel. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye bye.